G'day, so this is um, video number two, uh, following on from the video where I worked through the image you can see on the screen. Um, essentially we just worked through the global adjustments, lens corrections, some uh, global exposure, as well as some other basic adjustments. So overall the pre um, preparation of the image. The next part that we're going to work through is just a quick video on um, setting the mood or setting the, setting the, um, the uh, I guess, yeah, Mood sort of works well. It's a time that it's a it's a term that's sort of overused. Um, I think everything's about setting the mood, that sort of stuff. What I, what I think it is is um, manipulation of the colours to firstly either achieve the correct white balance to um to um uh, show how you saw it, uh, and then from there uh, intensify or manipulate those colours uh, within reasonable sort of. Um, boundaries there but to manipulate it uh, in the sense that you're going to change it to affect the scene uh, be it the warmth or the coolness of the light uh, the tinting of the shadows and that kind of stuff so there's a couple of little ways you can do that and you can get fairly uh, fairly caught up in that um, uh, right up to the point of color grading or um, you know, working through complementary color tones um, in Photoshop which works quite well I've just started sort of uh, trying to get my head around that but for now, we're just going to work with the um, white balance and tinting of the image, uh, control of the saturation of the HSL sliders, and a little bit more dodging and burning, but in a wider sort of uh, stance here before we go into the last video, which is the shaping of the light and drawing of the eye through the scene. So uh, we'll just rehash what we've worked through um, previously. And I'm just going to go back to history here and... I have completely reset this photo. So we're going to go back to at the last point that I was at. Yep. All right, cool. Just double checking here. So I previously edited this video and um, lost the entire lot due to the software that I was using at the time. So I just want to make sure that I've taken it from the reset. All right, so that's where I was. And I've worked through up to where I finished sharpening. Okay, cool. So if we pay attention, we'll get out of here and pay attention to where the, um, the adjustments are. I think I just completely bum steered myself, I'm not sure what the hell was going on. I think I just had a brush up and that confused me. I haven't had enough coffee today. Anyway, um, so back to setting the mood. So we're just going to start with the uh, temperature balance here. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. If you've got a white object in the, in the scene, you can do this with a, um, a white, sorry, a grey card or a white card to set the colour balance. Um, a lot of portrait photographers use that kind of thing. Um, I've done it with white placard as a guide to set a custom white balance in camera. However, I'm pretty lazy and technology is pretty good nowadays, so I prefer to find something white, what I know was white in the scene, and go with that. Now at this stage we're just going to um, use the eyedropper tool and you find white in the image and then you tap that bad boy and it's going to adjust it back to how it thinks it should be. Now that's quite accurate from memory and that's 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 the part that you're dealing with um, as a landscape photographer, be it pro, semi, hobby, learning, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think a lot of people find themselves editing or processing photos that can be months, months at a time in age. And I think particularly those that take a lot of photos across a varying range of subjects might not always necessarily remember how the white balance was. And that's why we get a little bit creative too, I think, um, as well as trying to sort of set the scene. So I'm going to go with a... Um, uh, let's set my white balance to, I'm going to cool it down a bit here. I'm going to set it to about uh, 10. That's okay. Go with that. I'm going to push the tint towards the magenta tones. Just touch them around that down a bit. 40. And it's not too bad actually. Just double check that time curve again. Yep. 
That's all right. Um, you know, and saturation here. So in the HSL side, if you've got um, the hue, saturation, and luminance of the image, uh, you can do it all at once, like so, if you like. Um, you can also set it to color only, which is very basic. So you can just hit the pickers there. You can set it to black and white. And then you can change the mixes in those channels there to um, affect how strong certain parts of the image are. And you can see how that's affecting the shadows down here and that red tone through the rocks. I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to head back to HSL All. And I'm going to boost the saturation just a touch across um, the essentially the red tones, so orange, purple, and magenta in this. See how red goes a little bit. Now, I'm not getting a huge effect with that. However, if I push it too far, it's going to bring an extreme effect through. So I'm just going to, going to reset that by double clicking. I'm going to push my orange up just a touch here. And I'm going to boost my purple and magenta as well. I'm just pushing that up so I can get a little bit more tone throughout this um, colour through here, but in particular, that last trace of sunset up on the screen. Alright, I've sort of pushed through that a little bit. Um, I'm just going to have a, have a slip play with the um, what, working of luminance and blues here. I'm going to lift up the tone a little bit, particularly bright, and you can see how much um, blue is actually in that water. That's foam there. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to use the um, grad filter there to dodge. Sorry, I'm going to burn very gently back a little bit in the corners. I'm going to do that by using a graduated slider there and just decreasing exposure just a touch. Actually, a fair bit. We go negative 40 there. Um, you can see how that's starting to shape that light back into here. I'm going to put another bad boy very broadly across the top there. I just want to anchor that light across to the left. And that's it. All right. I'm done. All right, so that, um, that finishes just the setting of the mood here. It's going to be fairly basic. Uh, the next video, we're going to talk through the shaping of the light, which is where a lot of the work gets done. Again, I usually use Photoshop for this, but we'll push through uh, how you can do the same thing in Lightroom. Alright, cheers for watching.